Here we go with episode 25 of my Sanibel Chronicles. For those who haven't met me yet, I'm, my name is Charles LaBeouf. I've lived in Southwest Florida for 72 years and 50 of those years I lived on Sanibel Island. About uh, oh, 10, 11 months ago, I needed something to do. So I came up with the idea to create this uh, web page channel and share some of my memories and some of my knowledge with anyone who wishes to know more about uh, the Barrier Islands, primarily Sanibel. So we'll get started with uh, a rather brief uh, introduction to my interaction with the, the city of Sanibel. This coming Tuesday, there are two important events that will happen. Number one is the day to vote. And if you haven't already voted, please make the effort to do so. I did mine by mail. It's, uh, it's much easier than standing in line, especially, especially at my age. The second thing on Tuesday will be the 50th anniversary of the city of Sanibel. And I had a little bit uh, to do with that, a small part. Nonetheless, I was participating in those early days that led up to and after the creation of Sanibel. After the causeway was completed in 1963, the traffic on the island increased slowly. Uh, Lots were sold, but development really didn't get started until about 1966, when a group of businessmen in Sanibel created the Island Water Association. And over time, that provided potable water to uh, most households on the island. And for example, I was living at the Sanibel Lighthouse back in the day, and in 1966, we connected to the water system and I no longer had to drink rainwater. So it, it changed my life uh, a little bit. As development increased, the traffic become very burdensome and development was sort of haphazard. Of course, we were under uh, Lee County zoning regulations. And I think I mentioned in the last video that uh, the county had uh, uh, designed a, a zoning level of 93 or 90,000 uh, persons living on Sanibel Captiva. And being quite familiar with what the, the load of the island could really take, uh, I was very interested in decreasing the density the county was allowing. So in the spring of 1974, uh, it became a hot topic on, on Sanibel, how we could uh, work to, to save the islands from encroaching over development. And a group of people formed an organization that uh, were to study the, the potential of incorporation of Sanibel to protect us from those high densities that the future held. And over time, uh, we got the, uh, or the people got the uh, a, a Sanibel city charter developed and, and plans for incorporation moved slowly over the summer. And then in November, 1974, November 5th to the day of the celebration that's coming Tuesday, the voters on Sanibel by a margin of 64% voted to incorporate the island as a municipality to get it away from the control of, of Lee County insofar as our our zoning and building rules went. And it became increasingly uh, debated among the community 
And this first uh, illustration is, is one of my favorites. It was uh, drawn by the late uh, commercial artist, Peter Smith. And this is his conception of what uh, Cenabelle would become if we didn't, didn't do something to uh, avert uh, the control of, of Lee County Board of Commissioners. And you look, examine it closely, look at it, you'll see uh, what it depicts as, as threats to the, the survival of Sanibel as a, a nice uh, island that, that we would uh, hope to save. And uh, it's, it's a good depiction. I just, uh, I fell in love with the illustration when I first saw it. Well, in November 74, we voted to incorporate and uh, earlier that summer, when the, uh, when the battle for incorporation first started, uh, at a um, picnic party at the lighthouse, a friend of mine, a couple of friends suggested that if the uh, city became a reality, that I should run for city council. And I tucked that away in my head. And then when the, the election process to uh, form the city manager type of government approached, people started uh, entering the race. And I had an unusual circumstance in that I was a U.S. government employee. So I had to check with uh, all of the authorities. And I found that the the Hatch Act that controls the political activity of federal employees did not apply to the Sanibel election because it was a nonpartisan election. So I could actually enter my name in the, the race for city council. I did, along with, I believe, 15 other candidates. And uh, the election was held I've forgotten exactly, exactly when it was in, uh, I believe in early December following incorporation. Trying to get something here so I can see it, but it's not cooperating with me. Let me see. I have something here that will give me the exact date. I believe if I can blow it up large enough. It was on the, on the uh, 4th of December, 1974, that we held this uh, special election, 16 candidates. The, uh, this uh, illustration shows the five top vote getters who would become the first uh, Sanibel City Council. And I happened to be in, among those, those five, which really, really surprised me. So with that, we'll go to uh, the swearing in ceremony that uh, was held at the Sanibel Community House a week or so later. And this is a photo of uh, Lee County Clerk Sal Jurassi uh, swearing me in as a city councilman. I'm there with my, my wife, Jean, and my son, Chuck. And on the far right is Porter Goss. So we became, along with uh, two other men and uh, a woman, the first Sanibel City Council. And this is the first official photograph of the, of the council. Uh, standing on the left is Porta Goss. In the center is Vernon McKenzie. I'm on the far right and seated is Z Butler. And to her left is Francis Bailey. Uh, we elected our mayor, which is a ceremonial position, and Porter Goss became the first mayor of Sanibel. I never was mayor. I, I couldn't really fit the position because I was the only one that had a full-time job. So I had to to work my my council time in my job uh, 
coordinate it to be sure I could make every council meeting. And by every council meeting, little did I know the intensity that it took for the next couple of years to, uh, to make every council meeting. I did serve uh, one year as vice mayor, but I never attained the mayor position. Because I couldn't, I really didn't want the responsibility. This is the council. Uh, in the center, uh, the woman is Mildred Howes. She became the first uh, uh, city clerk. And uh, we're being served coffee in those, those special cups were made by a Sanibel potterer named Mark Hyman. And Mark gifted those, uh, those cups to us. I believe Mark subscribes to this channel. Uh, I don't know exactly where he lives now, but uh, thank you, Mark. Those were neat, neat coffee cups. So after we formed the council, in 1975, the state of Florida passed a law that all counties and municipalities had to develop a comprehensive land use plan. So we tackled that task. The building densities when we were created were extremely high, as I mentioned previously. And it was our intention to reduce those, reduce the building densities and uh, control overall development. And in 1976, we passed our comprehensive land use plan. It's now popularly called the Sanibel Plan. Over the past 50 years, it's done very well and being sustained as the, the concept of how Sanibel should develop. And because we passed such an excellent plan, we never became that mythical Miami Beach that uh, Peter Smith envisioned in his drawing that I first uh, showed. The Sanibel plan is alive and well, and the council people since that plan have uh, towed the line and uh, held it basically straight and true. By 1976, I had drawn a two-year term. We drew straws at that first official council meeting and I drew a, a two-year term. So my first uh, term would, serve, would uh, cease to exist in 1976, but I decided to uh, go for a full term, so I ran for re-election. And this uh, illustration is uh, the card that uh, Sanibel Tomorrow, one of the organizations that was created to uh, create the city of Sanibel and sustain its early years, endorsed. Uh, top left is Porta Goss. I'm to the right. On the lower left is Dwayne White. Dwayne White had uh, been in the, in the first contest for city council and in vote getting, he was the number six. But in the, the second election in 1980, he successfully made uh, the city council. And on the lower right is uh, Francis Bailey. Francis re went on to be the longest, as far as I, I know, the longest uh, serving member of the Sanibel City Council. So my second term ended in 1980. And in 19, we had uh, our, our council, the, the, I believe the second council, had uh, selected uh, a site for our city hall and had approved all of the engineering and construction projects. And city hall where it is today uh, was going forward. Uh, one little anecdotal comment that most people that will hear this or may not hear it, never know, but one of our first uh, zoning issues that the council faced was rezoning the parcel of land where the city hall and all of the library and big art sets, historical village, that tract of land was uh, being considered hoping for approval 
to become a trailer park. And it would actually become, uh, well, you put it, look at it one way. The owners who were trying to build a trailer park on the site had the first Sanibel uh, trailer park uh, on the Gulf Beach where Loggerhead K is now located. But after they had sold their property to Loggerhead K, they must have procrastinated because after we, we became the city of Sanibel, uh, the uh, Periwinkle, before we had become the Sanibel City Council, the Periwinkle Trailer Park had been constructed. And then in 19, about 1975, the people that owned the first trailer park wanted to put in a second. And uh, we uh, heard the, the issue and uh, because of ecological factors, we decided uh, as a council, we would uh, not accept that uh, zoning change and it was declined. And then nearly 10 years later, the land was still available and lo and behold, uh, the city acquired it to build a to build a city hall. Well, in 1983, the, the council at that time uh, decided to, after the city hall complex was built, they decided to install a time capsule at the uh, stairway leading up to the elevated city hall. And this shot is a uh, one of uh, Fred Velton on the left. He was the mayor in 1983 and to the right is Bernie Murphy. He was the city manager at the time. They're holding the time capsule and they're about to uh, place it in the concrete sleeve that will, will hold it until November 5th, uh, 2024. And the, the next shot is the, is the plaque that, uh, identifies its dedication and, and the council that served at the time. But they did add the, the second city council uh, below them. So uh, our names uh, have been enshrined, enshrined there for 50 years. And uh, today, uh, Porta Goss and I are the only survivors of that first city council. Frankly, I never thought I'd, I'd make it this long. And uh, we've both been invited to attend the function on the 5th at four o'clock in the afternoon. We will reach ask to speak and uh, we will do so. And so if you're free, after you vote on November 5th, plan to visit the uh, Sanibel City Hall complex at four o'clock in the afternoon and uh, see the ceremony of unveiling the contents of the time capsule and uh, hearing the commentary that uh, Porter and I have to say after watching it evolve, the city evolve for 50 years. And with that, I'll ask you, to, if you haven't, please subscribe to my channel to help it grow. Uh, make comments, <coughs> excuse me, ask questions to uh, help the, the channel's diversity uh, grow. <clears throat> I now have a frog in my throat. Thank you for your attention. And uh, maybe I'll see you on the, on the 5th. If so, please introduce yourself. Thank you. And until next time, this is Charles LaBeouf, over and out.